Yo, the people. Sorry about the barnet. Um, the bowl cut is currently on its final stages because the barber's open tomorrow in the UK. Bosh, what are you saying about that? So, yeah, mate, I can't wait to get a little naughty trim up, but I know it's looking a bit dodgy, a little bit, yeah. So, anyway, let's get into this video, mate. What's going on, you lot? I hope you're all sweet. Um, yeah, mate, so following on from my last video, which was a very, very raw sit-down story time on how I started out as a small-time videographer and slowly worked up to working with some like industry-leading brands. If you wanna go check that out, it's there. Um, and the comments on that video were like a bit overwhelming. Like, I can't believe just how me sitting down, talking about my experiences, how much it actually helped you lot. Like. Um, yeah, man, so I'd really appreciate you guys in the comments. Like, I do these videos for you lot, so um, for you to actually give me that kind of feedback, <gasps> top-notch stuff. So I thought I'd carry on the momentum of them kind of videos at the moment, just because of like the economic climate, and I think that's what's gonna give you lot the most value at the moment, you know? Obviously, Verona Kairos is still lurking, it's still there, mate. If it comes up, give it a little. So in this video, I wanna talk about limitations. Limitations as a freelancer, videographer, whatever you wanna kind of call yourself, content creator, um, and I wanna talk about the biggest limitations that I found starting out to hopefully allow you guys to bypass these limitations and just get to creating the content that you want to create because I really found a ton of limitations in my way to create in the kind of video the kind of feel the kind of creation that I wanted to make at the time. Now there was tons of different limitations. For example, budget, um, gear, like there was loads of limitations on the gear, what my gear could actually do. Um, however, 2020, we're so lucky to have these amazing cameras for super cheap um, that produce amazing quality videos. Locations was a really, really big one. Having the right location, having the right cast, that is really gonna be huge for your video. That is essentially the story, you know? You can do so much with the camera, but I would much rather focus on what's in front of the camera than the actual camera and the movement of the camera itself, you know? Everyone's so, uh, like, caught up in the camera and what that's doing, mate. Like, no, focus on what you're actually shooting, because that is the story, that is what you're shooting. But without a doubt, the biggest limitation that I felt as a freelance videographer was music. Now, finding a piece of music for my different productions. I mean, I was doing corporate work, I was doing weddings, I was doing a few bits of commercial work at the time. And my God, like finding tracks was the hardest thing for me. And being someone who puts so much emotion, emphasis, and so much of my film and my story rides on the music, finding the right piece and actually finding a piece that I could actually license and pay for was the biggest limitation to my filmmaking journey without a doubt. Now, back in the day when I was doing my weddings, corporate and commercial work, I was using a platform and I was paying something like 300 pound for one track for like commercial work. And that was the absolute minimum, mate. Now, chucking an extra 300 pound on your invoice for your client was like, it just wasn't very nice, like knowing that I've sent my client an invoice, there's an extra 300 pound for a service that I haven't even provided, but is absolutely essential in the content creation of this piece of content. This content wouldn't work without the music. Music brings the story up, it brings the emotions down, we level out, we have a crescendo at the end. Um, yeah, it is such a big part. And for me, it's the biggest inspiration for my stories and actually driving and pushing the emotion through my story, my journey, that is part of my content creation, you know? Now, after using this service previously, I'm not gonna talk about it because I'm just not about like talking crap about actual people, but this was an absolute nightmare. Now, how lucky are we in 2020 to have music licensing platforms that you pay you pay, in my opinion, you, you pay absolutely nothing for, and you've got all of this, <laughs> you've got all of this content to use, all of these different tracks to use, man. Um, I've been using Artlist since like 2017, and I actually got in contact with them before this video and said, look, I'm gonna make a video and I'm gonna be talking about you in it. Do you wanna partner up with me? And they were like, yes, and I'm like, bosh. So thanks to Artlist for partnering with me for this video, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about how, literally, that platform actually changed my scope like for creating content. Um, it literally opened up so many closed doors when it comes to music. It also allowed me to be much closer with my clients. This sounds so stupid, yeah? But when you're doing like invoicing for clients, whacking on an extra 300, 500 quid for a music track, 
oh, it's just a bit salty, mate. It just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel like the, I don't know, the client is never happy about it. Like they're never, ever happy about you slapping 300 quid on an invoice for the music um, when they can't see the actual, they can't really see the benefit in that. However, as a creator, you know that that track, that piece of music is literally driving your story. It is literally taking your audience, delivering them to the end of your content with the message and hitting right. And I put so much of that down to the music choice. Now, before I talk about how I kind of collate my different tracks, stick them in their own collections, and then I can use them for different client work, I should give you a little bit of an overview of Artlist so that you can see how this all works. So Artlist is a royalty-free music licensing platform. I'm pretty sure you already know about it. If you don't, I don't know like what rock you've been living under, mate. Like just come out, see a bit of sunlight, you basically pay $199 a year, then you can use any track for any kind of project, commercial, TV, advertising, you can use it for anything, you're cleared mate, and your client is also cleared. They've also just come up with their new sound effects plan, so you get your music and your sound effects for $299 a year, definitely would recommend that. If you're gonna start doing a bit of sound design, that is definitely gonna up your production value. Now back in the day, that was a huge limitation for me on actually creating and delivering a piece of work for a client. Now that's out the way, I don't have to worry about music. So I'd say about once every month, I will literally sit through hundreds of different tracks. Now, a lot of the times I'll just have Artlist on in the background and it'll be playing a lot of different tracks. Now I might be doing a bit of work, I might be doing anything. And then as soon as one is strong enough that it grabs my attention, that's when I go back and I look and I go, right, what track is this? This is sick, I listen to it again and I go, right, what actually makes me feel something about this track? And that's when I will kind of collate it and put it into different collections. Now I've got different collections. Some of them are like commercial. Some of them were weddings when I used to do weddings. Some of them were like documentaries. And I'd also put different emotions on them. So I'd put like, this is a happy track. This is a sad track. This is an intense track. And sometimes I'd even literally write the kind of client on it that I would want to use that piece of music for. Now having all of these tracks in a collection is so ideal because whenever you've got a commercial coming up, whenever you've got a wedding video for example, come up. You can literally go into your commercial collection, listen to them tracks to see which one is the right track for your production. Now you already know that all of these tracks hit you emotionally. They kind of drive you and you can kind of feel a story out of these tracks. That for me is such a big time saving tool. It's such a big motivator in creating content. Like if I used to go from back in the day when I used to kind of listen to tons and tons of tracks, spend forever. And then once I found a track that I could use, I then couldn't use it for copyright reasons. I had to then license it for 500 quid. Um, yeah, that was a fucking nightmare. I'm not going to lie. So now knowing that I've got all of these tracks that I already love because <clears throat> bloody hell, have my balls dropped? Now that I know I've got all of these tracks in this collection um, to choose from that I already love, that already hit me hard, that I know I want to use for a video, um, that is just a massive barrier opened for content creation. Loads of my projects that I've done in the past, loads of my commercial work that I'm really proud of, now can't be seen on YouTube because it's been flagged up, it's been taken down from YouTube because of the music. Um, yeah, that is just so annoying. And luckily now, I don't go into a project thinking, right, what track am I gonna use? Where am I gonna license it from? How much is it gonna cost? Is the client gonna approve of it? Oh, it's like, it's such a weight off my shoulders that now thinking about it, I don't even think about it. I don't think about music anymore. Back in the day, I used to think about this issue that was music licensing. Now, I don't. And I just wanna thank platforms like Artlist for allowing us creators to have all of this abundance of amazing tracks to use. Um, yeah, we're just so very lucky. Now back in 2018, I've done a documentary that had five different tracks in it. Now, could you imagine the amount of issues I would have had trying to, f first of all, find five different tracks that actually worked for the story. Um, this story started out quite mellow, then it got quite intense, then it went down to the bottom really, really low on emotion. Then we had kind of a crescendo at the end. So I had to fit in all of these different musical elements to allow my audience to feel this emotion, not just let the story play out and you hear it. I want them to feel it through the music as well. So finding five different tracks would have been a 
nightmare and it would have cost me an arm and a leg I probably would have been paying out like over two grand for this kind of music to be allowed to be used for advertising for the kind of client that I was doing it for but luckily for me at the time I already had Artlist so I just went through my collections found the tracks in the collections that represented the emotion that I wanted the audience to feel at the time and bang I didn't spend hours and hours looking for these tracks. I already had tracks in there that I knew I loved that allowed me to feel the kind of emotion that I wanted to feel throughout this video. And um, yeah, I mean, it's just a huge benefit to creators. Um, real talk. I just want this kind of like story time series to be very real, very, very like practical on what I found as a limitation because I want to do whatever I can to remove all of these limitations as a filmmaker because I've noticed when the limitations aren't there, you these stupid ideas that you had no longer become stupid because they're actually possible now, you know? So that's what I want to do with this series. I want to just find a way to remove all of the limitations I've got as a creator. And music was easily my biggest limitation. So if you guys haven't got a subscription service, the most affordable one, art list, and in my opinion, the best one to use for commercial filmmaking work, freelance work, make a video that you wanna make with the track you wanna use, have no worries about copyright strikes, any of that kind of crap. You don't have to charge your client, even though you can charge your client, like maybe charge your client like $30, 30 quid for a track. You might even end up earning money out of art list, like, pfft. That's what I used to do. Anyway, people, thanks so much for watching. Um, let me know if you kind of like these raw sit down um, videos talking about freelance issues, freelance ideas, things to help you guys out as freelancers. Let me know in the comments section what your biggest limitations are because I want to go through some of them and then make a video about them and see how we can overcome these limitations to allow us to create the content that we want to create. That's why we do this, you know? Um, yeah, let me know in them comments, mate. And as always, Artlist have supplied us with a link so that we can get two months for free. So I'll leave that in the description for you. And I'll be catching you lot in the next one, mate. I don't know why I do this, but... Oh, shit.